Hey guys, come on in. Today we're jumping into a KTM 50. This is my son's bike and it has been a pain in the ass to work on. KTM's awesome. I just don't like the design on a lot of this. There's so much work I had to do to this thing. I picked it up for 400 bucks, ended up having a crank seal. I actually ended up having a bad crank. It wasn't that bad of a deal. Uh, it was just a train wreck. Um, I did have a spare bottom end. Pulled the crank out, had surface rust all over it, cleaned it up, and uh, rebuilt the bottom end, new bearings, new seals, uh, put a fresh top end in it, stock bore. Uh, everything's pretty much stock other than the base gasket delete. We uh, tightened up the squish a little bit and, uh, you know, try to bump up the compression. And things running pretty decent. Uh, we're just uh, in here working on it today just for the fact that the carburetor bowl is stuck and it's just dumping fuel. So my, my uh, son was a little disappointed Sunday. We went to ride and uh, tapping on the carb just wouldn't get the uh, float unstuck. Sometimes they're stuck pretty good. Long story short, uh, what we got today is the larger carburetor. Um, they put on some of these model bikes. Uh, the, uh, so what they usually uh, run is these three style engines. The Mini Adventure uh, doesn't have the reeds. Uh, uh, these two do. We have the uh, Junior Adventure and the Senior Adventure. To, long story short, uh, the Senior Adventure just carries a, a larger carb to make a little bit more power. I think this is a VM14 on there, and this is the uh, VM18 Makuni Chinese. I know, Chinese. I'll say it again, Chinese. All my other uh, vids and stuff I, I bashed the snot out of these carbs but i do run them from time to time myself i do not put them on other people's bikes unless it's requested sometimes i give them uh the option and say you know what you got maybe a one in three chance so they are getting better i will say they are getting better but some you you you, you just uh can't tune them um you know i've been pulling my hair out of the times on these carbs and wanting to chuck them into the woods just for the mere fact that they can be a pain in the ass guys but for the price um, I picked one up. Uh, I do believe on eBay, I'm not 100% sure. I can try and look back and maybe even pop this down in the description for you guys if this works out and uh, you guys want to purchase it yourselves. But again, I do not recommend it. Um, I just want to take a moment, guys, all you guys out there that is following along the channel, thank you very much. We're trying to grow the channel and do whatever we can. We're at the point of almost hitting a monetized um 500 subscribers. We're getting real close, guys. That's what we're shooting for. It's one of our goals before the end of the year. Um, with your help, guys, we can get there and help grow the channel and help put out more content. If you're new to the channel, guys, please help us out. Get down there, smash that subscribe button, and look for more videos to come. Let's dive into this KTM 50. I'll show you what's going on here. I'll show you what this pain in the ass bike is all about. So yeah, you're going to see some, some flaws on this thing. It looks good from afar. That's what drew me to purchasing this bike um so guys i'm not the only victim of these clutches coming apart and coming through the side case so um i do have another one and guess what when i got that from the other guy it was already cracked so we you know that this is an issue and i've also seen and i don't know if i've seen it on other videos but i've also seen i know i've seen them online uh with those cracked maybe ebay or something like that um, so everything's pretty much stock and other than tighten up the squish on this thing a little bit. And we uh, still need to get a brake cable. That's been working pretty good, my little rig there. But parts for this thing is very hard to find. And if you're tuning into this video, you're going to find out if you got this bike and you're looking for parts very quickly. Um, they're just hard to come by. Uh, there's some stuff out there, but yeah, so his, his float's stuck. Um, we're gonna take the carb off and just try and throw on this other carb and see what happens. Again, it's a Chinese carb. I do not support them at all, but we're gonna give it a try, guys. Here's a quick look at the three different style engines here, guys. And like I say, the uh, SX Senior and the uh, Senior Adventure had the VM18 carb to make a little bit more power. So we're gonna try and throw this carb on there. Um, now, I do know just because I've got another cylinder and um, the uh, intake uh, all, um, and reeds, I think, that I have are for this carb for the VM14. So we're going to have to make some kind of rig up um, to get this clamped on there. So that might be a challenge for us, guys, unless we uh, would find a little intake on there uh, on the eBay. And I highly doubt we will. 
But um, so yeah, let's dive in. Yeah, and here's uh, another thing we need to address, guys, is the uh, the exhaust is leaking up here on the flange a little bit. So we're going to take a look at that. And it's a nightmare to get to this one uh, bolt in there. <laughs> so uh, if you do have this bike, good luck with you with that. It, it's it's a pain in the ass. But uh, this bike's been running good. We pressure tested it after we rebuilt it. And um, I, it actually was so frustrating one time. I actually put it out for sale for a little while after we had it run. And I said, let's look for another one. And uh, he was just down uh, with not being able to ride. So I said, well, let's take it back down and let's get you going again, son. So let's dive in. All right, check this out, guys. That's my custom intake there to the air filter. Um, <laughs> yep, it's, it's what you do when you can't find parts. I actually like, I actually think this was better than uh, how it was uh, with the OEM piece there. Just had to show you guys that. All right, guys, 100% botchy work here, but I had to put a little, uh, about a millimeter layer of electrical tape and then trim it off with my razor blade. And this is the old one off the VM14. So we're gonna see if this seals up okay. Uh, we get it running, just a little spray of uh, carb clean, brake clean, uh, see if it stutters at all. We'll tell us if we have any air leaks, so it'll be real easy to see if it seals or not. That's one thing we'll definitely check. And then um, the, the intake, air filter side uh, is going to be a little bit of a challenge we'll see what happens there we'll get this thing on um and just see if we get it running first and then it's it's just a this whole design on the car on the, on the uh this side of the car is just i don't like it um but uh and also the how they did the filter like you know normal bi bi uh, bikes have an air box that kind of comes in there and how this it's just I don't know. I, I just don't like the design of these bikes. Um, KTM's awesome. Love them. But 2001, do not favor this bike whatsoever. And enough ranting. Let's try and get this car on here and see what happens. It's on there. It's a piece of shit. <sighs> Seriously, dude, this thing is just... Pain to ass to work on. All right, guys. So um, I'm gonna pull the needle in this carb here and uh, see what the needle height is set at. I think we're going to start the number three position um, and go from there. So we're gonna check and see what this is set at here, guys. And boom, it's already there, so that's good. We're on uh, needle three position there. Uh, one being the top. So that's good. That's where we want to be. Carb sitting in there, all right. Um, I think it's going to make a good seal. I think we'll do okay with that. Um, I just got the carb kind of tilted. Uh, we'll, we'll take, get this all put in, and uh, worry about the air filter uh, side uh, once we get the bike running, just to ensure that this carb's even going to run properly or not, because you know, you know how these Chinese carbs are. All right, guys, so other than tightening this up here, we're gonna try and fire this thing very, very soon. Um, thing looks good and sounds good. A nice snap, got the uh, slide smack in the carburetor when you let go to the throttle. Um, that's what you wanna hear. And I kind of jumped ahead of my guy, uh, self guys on this too. We're going to see what happens now that we got it on there. I did not even check uh, what size jet was in this thing because I'm sure this carb could be used on several different engines. But you know what? We're going to send it and just see what happens. Um, if it's lean, I don't know. But uh, we're about ready to give this thing a try and uh, see what happens here, guys. Guys, I'm gonna be straight up honest right now. I don't have high hopes for this carb, but we'll see what happens. I already turned the fuel on. Choke is on. 
Seems like everything should be still up fairly well. Gas is on. Well, guess we'll see what happens here, guys. Will it run? Get some vacuum going here. Kick it good. Again, like an idiot, I didn't check the jetting. A few moments later. All right, guys. So, not getting any kind of pop on this thing yet on this car. Does not surprise me. <laughs> Does not surprise me. I promise I put two strict mix gas in this thing to try to get it to pop off. We shot some uh, go go juice in the intake. <laughs> I promise I used two stroke gas. No, I didn't. A little bit of car cleaner, one shot won't hurt it, guys. Um, but if you keep spraying it in there, you're probably wreck your cylinder. So, not a good idea. Oh, 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 might be just the jetting, guys. I think we got some throttle to adjust, guys. <laughs> that dang on two-stroke smoke. I like the way it smells and all. Woo! We don't like the two-stroke smell. So guys, we're just going to take some play out of the cable here. Kind of see what happens. And ouch. So when I put the spring on, guys, I can tell it was kind of a crunch to get it in there. So the range of motion on everything. We might have to do something with the uh, adjustment cap on the top of the car and put the OEM style maybe on there. See what happens now that I tighten that up. That's as loose as I can get it. To be honest, guys, I'm a little nervous. Since I got the doors open now, we can uh, just jump on and ride without riding through the shop. <laughs> Oh, this bike is just, I, ah, uh, no. All right, it's a lot better, huh, guys? Now, um, we got a good slap there. I think we need to adjust the slide height here a little bit. See what happens there. Small increments, guys, and I do have um, I do have the pilot circuit, uh, definitely way rich. Um, it was, we're gonna go to about um, our turn and a half. That's always a good sweet spot. Turn and a half, two turns. Yes. <laughs> Sputter, um, almost like a four-stroking sound. So definitely 
red. Not a bad thing. Definitely not a bad thing, guys. Um, so we're probably going to have to end up pulling the carb and, and jet it. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to get it good warmed up here, guys. And get this smoke cleared out of here. <laughs> and we'll turn this bike around the other way. And blow smoke your way. Right there, shut off. So I'm bringing it in here real quick. And um, show you guys, you know, how to adjust this curve. Guys, I knew this is not the best view in the world. Uh, but the centermost portion is always your slide adjustment, okay, when you're idle. Once you have this set, leave it alone. It Once you, you know, you want it to where that slide's hitting on the bottom of the car, you know, you're getting that good smack, and then you just want to give it, you know, a bump, maybe full one full rotation. Every carburetor is a little bit different. Once that's set, you may have to make minor adjustments, but... Once you get there, leave it be. So that's always in the center of the slide right here, okay? On these two-stroke carbs. Um, and and four-stroke, uh, but right now two-stroke. Off to the side here, you hear a lot of people saying it's your fuel screw. Well, that is technically wrong. That's on a four-stroke carb. On the two-stroke carb, this is an air screw. If you go counterclockwise, which in your head you would be thinking, oh, that's going to deliver more fuel because I'm opening that screw. Well, no, that's why it's an air screw. Okay, so if you go counterclockwise, you're going to lean out the idle. If you go clockwise, you're going to enrich it, the idle. All right, just wanted to show that to help anybody uh, trying to adjust these carburetors. Now, one, Chinese carbs, sometimes you just won't get them right. I've been there, done that. Um, they are getting better. I'm not trying to promote Chinese carbs. This should have a Makuni VM18 on it all day long and not no Chinese junk carb. This is kind of a toy bike for my son getting, getting into riding MX. Maybe we'll do a race on this, but I would like him to have a better bike. Uh, needless to say, without getting sidetracked here, guys, um, if you've got an air leak, guess what? This is gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna all, once you get it hot, you're gonna be thinking, why do I gotta adjust it over and over again? And you just can't get it right. Guys, check for an air leak. Um, I didn't spray around this boot yet, but I know for a fact that made a pretty good seal, so I'm not too concerned. But if we have trouble adjusting this far, um, might be something we'll look for. This engine has been pressure tested and sealed up uh, 7 PSI overnight. So that should be good to go, guys. It should be able to pretty much idle all day long and not load up. It seems like we're getting in the ballpark, um, but needless to say, we're gonna have to change out the main jet. Yeah, I'm getting sponging up. Uh, right there, it loaded up a little bit. Still rich on the main. Sponging up on the exhaust a little bit, so. Uh, we're definitely going to have to pull the carp and uh, change out the main. Alright guys, so as expected, I don't think they gave us a jetting size on this thing. You know how it is in the factories over there. Quality control instructions <laughs> you name it uh never help you out it's just more work for them guys right so there is definitely not a single number anywhere on this thing i'm looking very very closely guys because sometimes they do have them really really small so if i even get a 70 i can compare them and guys if you're new into jetting i highly recommend these have seen their better days but uh getting machinist bits and it's a good way um if you're buying aftermarket jets to gauge um the size of your jets if you're you know uh unsure if, you know the I, I would have to say my last few purchases of mccuni jets have been aftermarket chinese jets 
and they've been doing have been doing these are pilot jets here i think oh that main jet and they've been doing really well guys so let me dig in here and see if i even have anything that small yep so point six one millimeters oh that metal in there and this drill bit is like 0.65 so <clears throat> even if i want up to the next size up again i do not recommend uh doing it this way but just to get my butt little buddy's bike running and not i'm going to order these size jets because the smallest I went down to was a 70. Uh, we need to go a little smaller to get this thing dialed in. So, this here, yep, that seems about like the size right there. It fits in that hole very, very snug on the back end of that drill bit. So, if anything, we can solder and put it back. We're going to say this bit is stock, okay, and we're going to knock it down to this size. And if guys, if it if it goes too far, uh, we'll, we'll know when we run the bike. We're not going to, you know, run it hard, but uh, until we know, we got it pretty close. But so we're going to solder this and then drill it with this drill bit. Again, guys, I apologize for the background noise. We soldered this up. It actually turned out pretty daggone good. I mean, doesn't look the best on camera. Looks better here by the naked eye. And uh, actually did a pretty good job. And here was my stock 70 reference. And, you know, it, it doesn't fit now. So this is kind of like jumping the next size down. So we're going to pop this baby back together and uh, see what she does. Let's see what happens. It's a lot of work, I know, but if you're in a jam, uh, you can get yourself out of a jam. But you can also be doing a lot of extra work. Let this run a little bit see what happens here let, let this get up the top so rich uh, we're going to change the mid we're going to change the needle height in here a little bit uh we're on needle three i'm going to i'm going to jump right up to needle one and see what happens guys all right guys so i skipped a few of the clips just trying to i'm kind of running out of time here and um we started in needle three position we went up to needle two it got a little better but it was still kind of like a dog would barely even spin the tire out up uh, uh, off i should say and uh now we want to needle one position so um we'll see what happens guys i think it's getting better and um only one way to find out smoke up the shop again right <laughs> Yeah, man. It's not smoking near as bad. Oh my gosh, yes. Now I gotta put the uh, air filter uh, intake on there. That'll richen it up a little bit. Oh my god. That is better than it's ever been, guys, without a doubt. Awesome. <laughs> guys, this thing. Oh, my son will be happy now. Woo! 
No hurry, guys. I'd have to say she's pretty dialed. Um, I'll probably have to fresh plug it uh, and pull it, and we'll see what the plug's looking like. We may even just get him to run it down the road and plug chop it. This is the best this bike has ran yet. I haven't took the time to really get it jetted out. I knew he was on the rich side of things, guys, so I just let him roll with it. Um, we had so many, so many issues with this bike with the clutch um, that was blowing apart. Um, it's a lockout style clutch now, and um, so I hope this helps somebody out there with just jetting and seeing how I tinkered around with stuff and how I soldered the jet up. It was a 70 I had and it was the smallest I had. So um, I'm really hoping this helps anybody. I highly don't recommend soldering the jets. I wouldn't do it for anybody else. Um, just for tinkering around um, and having a little uh, having a little fun, having a little play time. And guess what? I would have had to order an, uh, a jet kit up or the proper jet. And this thing uh, would have still been sitting, not running good. So now we have it running properly. My son's going to have a lot of fun on this bike. So all I got to do is get the intake back on here and the air filter hooked back up. And he's going to be having some fun tonight. I, I got a little bit low pressure in the uh, front tire. But guys, thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed the content. Um, if you haven't already, give me a like, give me a subscribe. And look forward to Junior getting out on this bike since it's running a lot better. We're going to get him on the track very soon, guys. Thanks for watching Digging Deep. We'll talk to you later.